This video goes over solving ODEs numerically, but through parameterized solutions so you can change your answers essentially on the fly. It is the precursor to the Animate and Explore video which follows. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to begin with an example we're going to follow here. We have a pendulum type situation where we're going to look at its angular position as a function of time as it goes back and forth. If it's to the left, it's at a negative angle. If it has moved to the right of the perpendicular, it's at a positive angle. We're going to release the pendulum at some initial angle at no speed. Um, we also are going to include some resistance, uh, which is going to be proportional to the angular speed squared, and will include a damping coefficient. What we'd like to do is be able to plot this position as a function of time uh, by varying the initial angle or the damping coefficient. This is a problem which can't be solved symbolically, so we have to solve it numerically. Here is the second order ODE that we're going to solve. This is a non-linear ODE. Again, here is the second derivative with respect to time. This is the term that of the force of the Earth through gravity pulling down on the pendulum. And this is the term that involves the resistance of the motion, uh, which is proportional to the angular speed squared. Here are our initial conditions. We're going to say the initial angle of the pendulum is at some angle called theta sub zero, and that its initial angular speed is zero. There are four constants in this problem, g, l, alpha, and the initial angle. We know two of these values are not going to change in our process, although we could have made the third, the l change, but we'll set these values to be constants and a known value. What we'd like to do is be able to solve this numerically and apply different values for alpha and theta naught as, if, uh, as needed. So how do we solve this? Well, we want to create some solutions and we're going to use the desolve procedure. We will again pass it a set of ODEs, well in this case just one, and the initial condition equations, ICES and a curly bracket that ends all the equations, the three equations. We are going to solve this numerically. And of course, by the procedure, I prefer make the output equal the list procedure. Now, normally, this will not work. And in fact, if I hit enter, uh, well, of course, I've missed bracket. If I put a parentheses here, um, it doesn't work because it gives us this warning about global variables. One of the problems is two of our parameters have not been defined, that is alpha and theta naught. In fact, it actually says something about why don't you use the parameters argument. So that's what we're going to do. Now what we're going to do is put a comma here, shift enter, and say parameters equals, and now we're going to give it a list of parameters, and we'll make that list of parameters first. Theta, let's find our theta, underscore, underscore, zero, comma, and the alpha character. So those are the two parameters, end square of uh, the list, close the parentheses, and now when we hit enter, it actually returns all those procedures that we can use, including what's most importantly for us is the theta is a function of t. So in fact, we can pull that out. Here we go, theta, hit escape, turn it into a theta, is defined as, let's evaluate for theta scape, oops, of t from our solutions. Okay. And now theta is a function of t. Now, we, you might say, well, why can't we look at some values? The problem is we have not defined any of the numbers for theta zero, and alpha, the two parameters. So if I actually, if I say, what are our solutions at, say, a time of 1.2, um, it will say, hmm, problem is the parameters have not been initialized. So the way to get this to work is we actually have to give it some values. So you say solutions, because you call the solutions group of procedures, and you tell it that the parameters 
are some values. The first one is theta sub zero, and the second one is alpha. So we'll put in th uh, 0.1 radians for the initial angle and zero for the uh, coefficient of the friction, basically the air resistance. All right, and what it does is it will substitute those values in to all the procedures that we're going to use. So now if we ask what are the solutions at a value a time of 1.2, it can actually give us the value out. In fact, if we say what is theta at 1.2, it will return our value. Now we're off to the races and we can plot theta as a function of t from t equals 0 to uh, say 3. And in, in this particular case, uh, we are doing a situation for which uh, the uh, title is that, uh, oh, let's say, um, quote, um, let's see, alpha is equal to 0, end quote, close that. And there we go, that is our plot, and there is showing that alpha is not changed. And not surprisingly, if there's no air resistance, therefore it just swings back and forth. Now what we could do is we can change our solutions to two other numbers. So solutions, okay, again, parameters to tell it that we need to pass it new parameters equals open square bracket. And again, the list of the two values, again, we'll start it at 1.1 radians, but now we will give it a alpha value of 3.3, close the parent list, hit enter, and now we have two values. And now if we plot again, theta as a function of time from t equals 0 to 3, and in this case, the title is, quote, alpha, let's go over, select alpha equals 3.3, end quote, okay, so it doesn't act on it. Um, now you can see that by adding the resistance, the pendulum's angle varies with time uh, and eventually starts to dampen out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a procedure, which is going to be past the two parameters that we like to work with. And then we're going to have this procedure both change the solutions and also plot it out at once. So this is a long step. So let's write out the name of the procedure. The name of the procedure was, we'll call it plot motion, colon equals, that's what we're going to assign to it. And since it's a procedure, we write P-R-O-C, and that you can see it's turned to a bold. And now we're going to say, what are we going to pass the procedure? We're going to pass it two values. First is that initial angle, which I'm going to call theta zero, okay, which is different than theta sub zero, all right? It's just a dummy variable, and alpha zero, so that when we call this procedure, it will take those two numbers and do the following. It will call from the global expression of solutions, so it will take the solutions, Okay, put a semicolon, shift, enter. It will take our solutions and it will write parameters equals and it will put in these particular values. Theta, sub zero, and alpha of zero. It's not really sub zero, close parenthesis. So that's the first thing it's going to do, semicolon. Okay, that's the end of that line. Let's add another line. The next thing it will do is it's going to plot, open parentheses, we'll have it actually plot theta of t. In fact, we need to put theta into our global list because it is something we are extracting from the main area. Okay, comma, and we'll have it plot from t equals zero to three, and we'll make the y component minus one to one, so it doesn't vary. And we'll put some size in of uh, 400 comma 200, and we'll make a color of a uh, dark blue. Close parentheses, semicolon, shift enter, and then you type end P-R-O-C to say that's the end of the procedure. When I hit enter, it returns that information and you can see how it's written out. 
And OK, I'll go back and actually put in a colon so we can save some space. Now we're ready actually to test it. So if I say plot motion, and we'll put in the value of 0 0.1 and a value of 1. Again, the initial angle will be 0 0.1 and the alpha is 1. When we hit enter, it makes a plot that looks like that. If I go back to plot motion and change it to 0 0.9 and 1, now the plot looks like that because, again, we've kept both the x and y uh, axes the same. If you're happy with your plot motion, you can actually turn it into an explore. Let's see how that works. Okay, we will write explore. Okay, plot motion is what we are doing. We are again are going to pass it the information that we're interested in. And this time I'm going to be a little bit nicer and put theta underscore underscore zero. That's what we're going to pass at the theta and the actual alpha. So where is that coming from? Comma. This is coming from the parameters within Explore. So shift enter and write out parameters equals and now give it a list of the parameters. For example, theta underscore underscore zero is a value. We will have it start from 0 0.1 dot dot one and the other angle is or the other parameter is alpha, it will start from 0, 0.0 dot dot to 1. And again, by giving the parameters some floating point numbers uh, that will give the parameters a continuous spectrum of values. Put a comma there, and let's actually give it some initial values when it writes explore. Otherwise, it will use the far extremes. Initial values equals open square bracket and again what is the initial square bracket theta underscore underscore zero is going to be equal to 0 0.8 that's what will be our initial value and we'll make alpha equal to 0 0.5 close of that list close the parentheses and now it's going to plot the motion call this procedure with these parameters, starting with those initial values. And when I hit enter, I get something that looks like this. And now you can use the slider to go back and forth. Watch the next video to make animations and to even explore your animations using parameterized solutions of numerically solved ODEs.